Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Glad that you could join us. Our guest today is Mike Clayman, Flexion CEO. Flexion is a company that's uh, focused on non-opioid pain medications. He's joining us today to talk about Flexion's inflection year ahead the importance of non-opioid options for people suffering from pain. A lot to cover in a very short period of time. Welcome to the program, Mike. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks, Neil. Pleasure to be here. A bit of your background, uh, other than being CEO of Flexion. Yeah. So I'm a physician by training, uh, a nephrologist, uh, joined the industry to develop new medicines uh, a number of years ago, Mm -hmm. and have worked uh, to do that uh, literally for the past uh, 30 years, 20 years at Eli Lilly and Company and a little over a decade at Flexion Therapeutics, which was co-founded with Neil Bodick. Neil Bodick, Dr. Neil Bodick and I co-founded the company in two th- late 2007. Uh, and uh, we are focused on uh, progressing non-opioid medications for the treatment of musculoskeletal conditions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and our lead compound is... Uh, a compound called uh, Zoretta. Zoretta is a novel formulation of a commonly injected steroid that allows the, uh, after injection into the knee, um, allows persistence of drug at therapeutic concentrations for at least 12 weeks. Um, If you'll um, bear with me, Neil, just to back up for a sec, Mm -hmm. just to frame osteoarthritis as a disease, uh, many people think of that as an I- inevitable uh, accompaniment of aging. It's actually um, a-, a lot more than that. Um, it's a d- disease of c- progressive breakdown of cartilage in the joint, progressive disability, substantial amounts of pain, actually associated with increased mortality. If you carry, uh, if you have osteoarthritis compared to age matched and comorbidity matched. Um, uh, patients who do not have osteoarthritis, and, and that's a reflection of increased cardiovascular risk, likely a reflection of um, sedentary lifestyle. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a debilitating disease, it's a serious disease, and it's a disease that's associated with excess mortality. Treatment options are limited. Um, oral treatment options, starting with things like Tylenol or then going to Advil and, and, uh, and other oral agents, um, are limited. They're limited in terms of options and in terms of efficacy. Um, many patients, as they progressively exhaust those oral treatment options, um, can be put on opioids, which is really, I think, by almost any standard, a, an undesirable choice for a chronic condition like osteoarthritis. But 40% of Medicare patients, for example, who have osteoarthritis are prescribed opioids. Uh, and in addition to the oral medicines, there are medicines that are injected into the knee um, for the treatment of knee, uh, knee pain related to osteoarthritis. Two classes of drugs, one steroids, one hyaluronic acids. Steroids have been around for 60 years. Things, I mean, they're commonly referred to as cortisones, et cetera. Um, none of those are formulated to um, stay in the joint for any period of time. So following injection, they flood out of the joint. And um, as a result, the pain relief that a patient obtains, which is typically pretty good, fades after, on average, uh, two to four weeks. Um, And the hyaluronic acids uh, barely separate from placebo in controlled clinical trials. And recently, the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons uh, came out in their guidelines uh, indicating that they could not recommend their use for reasons of, their words, lack of efficacy. So we saw a real opportunity here to address the unmet medical need associated with steroids, reasonably good pain relief of limited duration, and by convention, um, steroids are not injected any more often than every three months. And so a patient would go to their physician, get a steroid injection, get good pain relief, go back after a month and say, I'm ready for my next injection. And the physician would say, come back in two months. And that's not a very satisfying experience. Long story short, we formulated a commonly injected steroid and um, demonstrated through um, clinical trials in uh, close to 2,000 patients that Zoretta is associated with rapid, substantial, actually um, greater than what we've seen. When you look at the totality of the data, we believe greater than what's seen with the immediate release steroids that are out there. 
and uh, for at least 12 weeks of, uh, of pain relief. So we submitted the F to the FDA our new drug application in December of 2016, approved in October of 2017, launched uh, shortly thereafter, and, and we are about a year and a half into the launch, and we're very excited about how, how things are going out there. Is the dosage directly related to the amount of deterioration in the joint or in specific joints? No, it's a very good question. Uh, by convention, um, steroid dosing is not typically tailored to the patient characteristic um, or set of characteristics. So, for example, with the immediate release steroids, Kenalog, uh, technically triamcinolone acetonide, a commonly injected steroid, is typically injected at a dose of 40 milligrams or 80 milligrams into the knee. And, and that's really a reflection of perspective of treating physician, much less about tailoring to patient need. So um, it's, it, there's a bit of one size fits all. We, uh, Zoretta um, uh, is 32 milligrams of the active ingredient, triamcinolone acetonide, which we find particularly appealing because we're using a lower dose, but getting better and longer pain relief. Because it's a steroid, it's a powerful anti-inflammatory. And in fact, we think that's the, what, what is happening uh, pharmacologically, that you inject the steroid, the steroid suppresses the underlying inflammation in the joint that causes pain. Um, and to the extent that um, it provides substantial um, suppression of inflammation, that translates directly into substantial pain relief. What about side effects and um, effects on the liver? Well, it, it turns out what we one, one of the uh, advantages of, of of an extended release steroid injection into the the knee joint like Soretta is that um, it slowly pays out um, the steroid from the formulation in the joint. The joint's only um, a couple of teaspoonfuls in volume. Um, and so you don't need much drug in the joint, absolute drug in the joint, to create an effective concentration. That drug, um, once free in the joint, then moves into the bloodstream, but moves into the bloodstream at very low levels, vanishingly low systemic exposures. That's in contrast to the standard steroid injections, which are not formulated for extended release. So you put the full 40 milligram dose in there, and within an hours to days, the drug has left um, the joint. And what that translates into is substantial plasma concentrations associated with the standard steroid injections. And what that then um, translates into is um, hyperglycemia in diabetics. So a, a diabetic patient in 20% of um, patients with osteoarthritis have diabetes who gets an immediate release, a standard steroid injection, and then has that steroid flood into the bloodstream that, that steroid will affect, will counteract the action of insulin, and that becomes the basis for substantial increases in blood sugar. And we did a head-to-head -head trial of Zoretta compared to the standard steroid, and we showed that we largely avoid that, hyper, that hyperglycemia, um, a reflection of very limited uh, plasma exposures. In fact, we're, our peak plasma exposure is about 1 18th what is seen with the uh, the standard steroid preparation. So that's kind of, that's a, in addition to what we believe are, are substantial efficacy advantages in the diabetic population, this, this has the potential to confer um, additional benefit. So in wrapping up, it looks as though uh, Flexions has touched on something that could really be greatly beneficial across the board, not only with uh, musculoskeletal pain, but with um, several types of pain uh, without the use of opioids. Well, we are, we certainly, that is our focus and we are, right now we're approved for treatment in knee. We're doing studies in hip and shoulder to expand the label um, for this. And uh, I know we don't, we don't have all the time in the world, but we are very also very excited about our, our gene therapy, as you mentioned up front, that has the potential, the potential in its early days, but based on the animal um, studies um, to, to, absolutely shift the paradigm in the treatment of patients with osteoarthritis. And, and, it, and maybe I'll uh, ask that you invite us back and we'll talk about gene therapy the next time.
Absolutely be a pleasure. I thank you for taking the time this morning. Like I said, a uh, lot to cover in a little bit of time, but as uh, as you said, we'll get you back and uh, talk a lot more about Flexion and uh, what's going on there at Flexion. Thanks you so much, Mike, for coming in this morning. Neil, an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I'd like to give our listeners a website where we can go and get some more information about Flexion. It's uh, www.flexiontherapeutics, F-L-E-X-I-O-N, therapeutics.com. Thanks, Mike. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud, and be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button, and support us if you can.